going, Wade? We are going to High Bluff State Park, I think it's called, or High Bluff River State Park, I don't know. High Bluff Campground. Hi, I'm Wade. And I'm Lorraine. And we are On, on the, the Off Ground. Ground. Today we are heading east and eventually to South Carolina, but we'll be making our first stop off at High Bluff State Forest Park. From there we have an unusual stay and it takes us towards Jekyll Island where we do a quick visit and stop at Driftwood Beach. And after that we head straight to Fort McAllister which allows us to visit historic Savannah. We were on a winding road to begin with off of the number 10 and we're just outside of Tallahassee. So all reports say it's a beautiful campground on a river, not very big, with a boat ramp, boat um, launch. Yeah, boat launch as well as a pier, and not a very busy campground. I'm suspecting at 10 degrees or 9 degrees right now Celsius, we're not going to come up to a campground that's very busy. And I see our campground is coming up ahead. And if we're the only ones camping here, then I'll be nervous. <laughs> No, it doesn't look like uh, we're the only ones. Uh, we're good. Your destination is on the left. Mm -hmm, it is. <laughs> now, even when I booked, it did look like there were several sites open. This has no water, no electric, and I think those uh, washrooms over there are like pit toilets. So we're looking for site number six. Oh, you know, number six. that's number six. So that's our campsite. Well, we've arrived at uh, High Bluff Campground. It's a beautiful little park. This is our campsite. We've got this big, beautiful tree beside us. And there's about two other campers here. Another motorhome and a tent. It's a Florida Forest Service site. And there's a river right next door. This is a part of Florida you just don't imagine. All you think about is Disney and beaches. But this is absolutely beautiful territory. There's a little public fishing pier here. Some of Florida's freshwater fishes. I don't see any walleye. Oh wow, this is pretty. Those trees in the distance, that's kind of what I imagined the swamps to look like. Well, it's amazing how different a campground looks first thing in the morning as opposed to in the middle of the night. Yeah, four in the morning we could hear a car driving onto the road right behind our camper and we looked out the window and it just parked there, just stopped there. That was a little unnerving. I don't know what you'd do, but we just kind of waited for it to go away. I've seen too many movies. I get nervous at nighttime. Wade and I have spent eight weeks in Florida and we are officially pointing the van north. We are driving north, which is kind of like to home, except that we're heading into Georgia. the glamour of dry camping. Uh, we are making just a quick overnight stop, so we're beside a freeway. Lots of trucks coming by. That may have to do something about our camping site. <laughs> we're spending just a few hours sleeping overnight. We thought we'd stay at the pilot. It's free. There should be lots of safety in numbers here. So it's not always as glamorous living as we'd like to show, but this will do for tonight. Well, our stop off at the pilot station afforded us a great night's sleep with no worries and we felt safe all night long. Yeah, the noise didn't bother me one bit, thank goodness. So now we are on Jekyll Island. And what's neat is that as we're driving into Jekyll Island, we see an information booth, we stop. You know, you never know if it's worth your while, but she directed us to Driftwood Beach and I'm so glad we're here. This is amazing. It is just amazing walking around here and seeing the crazy forms of dead trees and, and roots and... Yeah, everything uprooted and obviously damaged due to hurricanes and just wind and rain and water over it, I guess, worn these trees smooth. It, 
a great place to explore. trees next to the trees that are considered driftwood completely I guess ravaged by I don't know I guess um, all the storms hurricanes this place is called driftwood beach wow what a place to explore See the whole root system pull right up. It's so incredible the patterns and the designs. This is the other side of that root ball. We've got three nights at Fort McAllister State Park. Two nights in one spot and one night in another. We are at Fort McAllister State Campground in Georgia and uh, just south of Savannah, Georgia. And we're here for three nights and it's a beautiful, another beautiful campground again. Lots of moss in the trees, Spanish moss in the trees. And we have a beautiful campsite. Electrical and water service this time. You know when they tell you to take a long walk off a short pier? I think I found the short pier. And down into the mud. I think the tide is out. <laughs> <laughs> do you think? Yes, I think the tide is out. Take a look at all that mud. Those mussels or clams or something in the mud. I don't know, but I just want to know how deep would you sink if you walked in that mud? Barefoot, even with shoes. You want to give it a try? I'll record you. No, I don't. <laughs> this is pretty cool. A life jacket saves lives. Wear it. This is a loaner station. Take one, use one, see if it fits, and put it back later on when you're done. Wade and I get to have this campsite here for two nights, and then the third night we have to move. That's kind of how it works when you're trying to find campsites and last minute and just figure out places to see, and it works for us. With the van, it's pretty easy for us to just kind of pick up and move. And so, in fact, tomorrow, the pick up and moving will be quite easy because really we throw a lot of this stuff in the wagon. We can walk our bikes over. I'm just going to give you an idea. This is site number, um, what are we, 37. And we're being moved to site 35 for tomorrow night. And just to give you an idea, it's... Uh, right where that camper is sitting over there and that's their picnic table which will be our picnic table tomorrow so this is way documenting our expenses this week here we put the bills in a little ziploc he writes it down on his google sheet and then throws them in a pile here in the meantime i did some cleaning in the van and we're doing recharging maybe sitting at a campsite, not running anywhere and doing anything is recharging for both of us, but also for our devices and uh, the things that we feel like we need to drag along as we do our videotaping and try to get our sound right. Don't always have our microphones ready and charged. So here we go. That's where the Jackray has been super useful and great for when we want to do some off-grid stuff. It's not every day you go out and do laundry and just watch five deer walk across the yard. 
Are you watching that? Watching me. I could One, stay two. in this moment forever so I can hold you in my arms. I will carry you on my shoulders as long as I'm able. Scare the monsters under your bed. are the keepers of Gullah history. See, I make sure that I pass down stories and traditions morally to the next generation, and I ensure that people know the Gullah contributions to Savannah culture. Ahoy mates, and welcome to the world famous Pirate's House. Ace is my name, and cards are my game. I'm a rogue, buccaneer, philosopher, comforter, and lifelong sailor of the high seas. That house right there, 1810, is where the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King stayed for three or four days in preparation to go to Washington in 1963 and where he made enough changes to his I Had a Dream speech that he hadn't given yet, he decided to try it out as a Sunday sermon with that congregation right there. That is the second oldest African American Baptist church in America. It's also where Sherman and Secretary of War stand first met with the black leaders, the church leaders, and proposed the 40 acres of the mule. Africa, um, they brought with them, they spoke a common language even if they weren't from the same country, same region, and uh, it is the oldest black culture in America along the coast of Georgia and South Carolina. They came to work in the rice fields. Columbia Square right there, 1790s. That house right there came 90 years later in the 1880s. That is the largest residential house in the historic district. Has 17 bedrooms, 18 fireplaces, and an elevator. Which means it has uh, electricity. The house is called the Iron Lady because everything on the outside of it is not flammable. Obviously the brick is not flammable, but even the, what you think is wood is actually ironwork. You know who restored that house? Joe Namath and Terry Bradshaw in the 1970s and 80s. This is our first visit to Savannah, Georgia. And it is absolutely beautiful outside. And this is Forsyth Fountain or Forsyth Park. Tourists. <laughs> well, one of the best things we did was take a bus tour around the city of Savannah, which let us see areas that we wanted to walk to later on. It really introduced us to the history and to the structure of this city. And it ended up bringing us to that iconic water fountain. And uh, we, it was so worth it to do that tour. Well, we have been walking many miles, many steps, and I think we need some food in our stomach. So we are heading down to the Waterfront District in Savannah. Going to check out some restaurants that we know are that are in that area, and this cobblestone sidewalks are making us hungry and tired. And I think we found a place on the map here. It's called Tubby Seafood. We're going to give it a try and see what happens. It gives us a view of the waterfront, uh, the shipping river, and... Uh, and there's some buskers out there, too. Yeah, there's some buskers out there and a trumpet player. And we've already seen a ship go by. <laughs> we have sure enjoyed our time here in Georgia, and we are sad to leave. It was way too short, and I know there's much more to see. So if you have ever been to Georgia, leave a comment about what else we need to see and come back to. We are now preparing to head off to South Carolina where we are getting our electrical system retrofitted and putting on solar panels and a uh, lithium battery with a new inverter. We're taking our old vintage van and turning it into a modern machine. So as we've said all along, our plans keep changing. We hope this is gonna stay solid, but our plans keep changing and we need to hold our plans loosely. loosely.